Roy, thanks for uh, joining me for this latest conversation in cars with Cinch, both born in Croydon. Yep. Kemba family is uh, are, are very much part of, of both of our lives, as well as, as Crystal Palace Football Club. You you lived with Steve, didn't you, in the, yep. in the early days? I came to a party once, although I'm not certain you were born, but, <laughs> but uh, I knew your dad Alan reasonably well from, mm. with Steve, and, and then one night after one of the games, we, we would meet up at your house, and I remember exactly <laughs> where it was, because yeah, it amazingly be enough... Down in or something. No, it was the one in West Croydon. Was it? It was, it was, <laughs> this one was in West Croydon, and, and amazingly enough, it was almost obvious it where I was born really <laughs> amazing so the, wow. so we got loads of it. loads of stuff your career has been quite extraordinary coming up for what 50 years almost in, in management you know having seen all that you've seen been all the places you've been what are, what are the similarities in terms of management with with the people and players um, that you've encountered over the years I think a lot of the principles with, around leading a team they haven't changed enormously if you look at the really good managers and coaches Going back, you know, you would also remember, you know, from the from the 60s and 70s. I think they had the qualities that they'd still be needed in today's game. It's just they'd be dealing with different players. They'd be dealing with a, a faster game, and of course, society throws up different characters for us to deal with. I've got to say that's always seemed to be to be less of a problem than the major problem. How can I go to a team, work with this group of players that I've got? and try to make them or mould them into a better team than perhaps they were when I came. What do you do, you know, that outside, in the quieter moments away from football? What are your sort of passions? What are your interests outside of that? This job at my age is going to take a lot out of me. And what's more, I need to accept that my full focus has got to be on, on this job during the time I'm doing it. Yeah. And there'll be all the time in the world to think about other interests. And the other interests will be traveling, of course. I've always been interested in reading. Reading has mm. always been a part of my life. It's been, I suppose, what's taken me away from the pressures of the day to day. Over the course of your, of your managerial career, speaking of wisdom, what would you say have kind of been the the biggest things that you that you've learned over over time? Maybe about yourself, or maybe about sort of just managing people. It's, it's the small changes that are going on in you all the time. Mm. I try to be more tolerant. Now I try to be less emotional. I try to be. Uh, kinder and more respectful. I think I'm more aware now of the weaknesses that I do have, you know, as a, as a character. But I think you do need to keep very much in focus. Well, what does a football coach mean? You know, what do the players need from me? What have I got to be doing? And so therefore you'll come back to certain basics, which are sine qua nons really of any coaching work, you know. Are you, are you taking into account how the players are feeling? putting yourself to some extent in their shoes. Yeah. What do you think are the qualities that all good leaders need? So Adam Holyoke at the Oval was brilliant at this. He would he would make it feel as though nothing was his idea. He wasn't telling anybody what to do. It was kind of like the players were invested entirely in what was going to happen. And I think that was I think that's an absolute stroke of, stroke of genius from from leadership. I was thinking about quitting the game all all together. Um, around about the turn of the century, about 2000, yeah, the end of 2000. I wasn't playing well, wasn't enjoying it. I'd kind of, you know, I'd messed up my sort of my private life, all the rest of it. And a kind of a last ditch thing, I called, called my old man and said, look, I need you to, to, to reteach me how to play. Almost, I just said, do what you like, treat me like I've never seen a, a and I'd played for England by this time. <laughs> um, treat me as I'd never played the game before. Let's, let's start from the beginning. And so, and we had three months at the beginning of the 2001 season where we literally worked one-to-one -one for, for three months behind closed doors and then the, by absolute luck five or six batters for England batters who would have been way ahead of me in the pecking order to play the Ashes that year in 2001 all got injured I just made a few runs on, on a, in a televised game a one-day game for Surrey and they picked me to, to bat a number three in the Ashes in that series for the first test Fantastic. first test went okay Second test went okay, but I think, yeah, Lords made it made a fifty at Lords or wherever. We lost the both games, um, and then sort of come the fourth test at Edinburgh, I got the, the one hundred and seventy three to to win us the test match, and all of that was as a result of, of working with my old man. Right, look, cars. Do you remember oh, your first your first car? I passed the test and I came down from the the little house in Sydney Road in West Croydon. There was this this maroon mini. 
<laughs> half outside. Nice. I watched that car then. It was, it was my mother who'd been saving money <laughs> somehow <laughs> bought this car. So I shall always remember <laughs> that one because of the sacrifices she's obviously made to, to get it there. And secondly, the way I found it because I hadn't expected a car. And that was my first car. That's way cooler than mine. I think I, 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 had a, I think the first one I, I bought or had my name to it for my own finances might have been a Vauxhall Corsa or something like that yeah. I'd had we, we got we used to get given sort of sponsored cars I was yeah. driving around at the Oval so I had a, a, a Vauxhall Vectra or something with my name on it yeah. which people people still stop me in, in Croydon to say this I, I remember seeing your car parked out so whatever your name written all down yeah, the side yeah, I was like yeah. what time of night was it <laughs> don't they're tell da- anyone dangerous <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you spend much time sort of you know, I know you love your reading but if on your travels you, what, what do you do do you sort of listen to music I like music very much um, but I do listen to it so it would have to be something I, I don't like music in the background so much mm. right? like, I can't do two things at once if I'm going to listen to music and then of course if I don't like the music that's on the radio it irritates me <laughs> what about the team bus I mean, I'm guessing there's there's some stuff on there that's not, well, not on your playlist then. yeah not really to be fair <laughs> no actually on team buses now it's all individual isn't it everyone's got the headphones I mean, that's on that's so different I mean that's yeah. something which has changed enormously in my life I hear it in the dress room uh, it's okay we're at home because I can I can sort of retreat to, <laughs> to my, your my office. own little office so <laughs> away from home often you're in there so I, I get I get my fair share of that music which I don't fully understand <laughs> fair enough but it's been a great pleasure Mark yes, and, uh, I'd like to ask you lots more questions but well, they, they, likewise they I'm sure to. I'd like, like to get into some of those some of those books actually <laughs>